Well, on my last trip to Normandy, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't take more time to spend at the spot where I am right now. This is Sword Beach. And on D-Day, this is the spot where the British 3rd Infantry Division landed, uh, along with several British commando units. And really, two of my favorite figures from the, the Normandy invasion landed right here. And their names were Lord Lovett and Piper Bill Millen. So as I mentioned, right here is where the British 3rd Infantry Division landed on D-Day and uh, was followed up by several different British commando units. So the, the first Special Service Brigade was made up of the 45 Commando Royal Marines and uh, Commando Numbers 3, 4, and 6. Uh, now, Number 4 Commando Unit uh, included the French and they were going to be moving off in in this direction right here once they moved inland to take Weistrom and the guy who was going to be leading the first special service brigade was the 24th chieftain of the clan Frazier a guy by the name of Lord Lovett whose real name was Simon Frazier what in the ever-loving heck is wrong with that guy holy smokes it's freezing cold out here so lord lovett had commanded a unit at the failed uh dieppe raid uh e even though it was a failed raid his particular portion of it was successful and this guy was something else just completely cool under pressure just a different kind of guy and being a scotsman if he was going to be leading a commando unit in the invasion of France on D-Day, well, by gosh dang, he was going to have a bagpiper with him. And uh, the man that he drafted to play bagpipes up onto Normandy was 21-year-old Bill Millen. Okay, we've moved up off of the beach a little bit, so maybe the, the wind won't be quite as violent, but here is a statue in the Queen Red Sector of Sword Beach to Piper Bill Millen. Uh, now, not only is he the only person on D-Day who is playing the bagpipes instead of carrying a, a rifle, uh, he's also the only one who wore a kilt. So out of the, I don't know, 150,000 men who attacked on D-Day, uh, Bill Millen is the only one with a kilt. So you can imagine jumping into the English Channel with that thing on. Uh, well, if you know anything about Scotsmen and kilts, well, they don't wear underwear. So that's going to be a little bit cold on your undercarriage whenever you jump into the channel. But anyway, uh, Army regulations forbade any playing of bagpipes uh, on the front line and whenever Bill Millen brought that up to Lord Lovett uh, Lovett replied well that's an English regulation and you and I are Scottish so it doesn't apply to us now, there is a great picture of Bill Millen as he is exiting his landing craft here on uh, Sword Beach and uh, Lord Lovett had requested that as they were coming in that he play a song called Highland Laddie. Okay, so once they got up here, uh, there, there would have been really a, a lot of, of men who had fallen from the East Yorkshire Regiment. And uh, once up here, love it, completely cool under pressure. Okay, there's German snipers that are firing. Uh, this, this is a dangerous place to be. He starts putting in requests. Uh, so he asked Bill Millen to strike up uh, the road to the Isles, and uh, Bill Millen is just marching up and down here playing his bagpipes. 
German prisoners who were caught later on were asked why they didn't shoot him and they said they thought he was a, a an idiot or that there was something wrong with him and that he posed no danger. Uh, but what Millen did do is really kind of inspire the men and uh, kind of kind of give them a, a little bit of extra oomph and uh, so, some pride as they were charging into Sword Beach. Now once they secured this area, the next place that they were going was to relieve John Howard and the Oxen Bucks at Pegasus Bridge. Before we move on, I just wanted to come back and check on this son of a gun and make sure that he's still alive. This guy is nuts. There must be something about the Queen Red sector of Sword Beach that just attracts crazy people. We got Bill Millen in his kilt playing the bagpipes in 1944 and we got this dude in 2021. Oh man, he just got smoked. Okay, we're, we're still heading to Pegasus Bridge, but there's a, a memorial here in Weistrom that, that I wanted to stop and check out real quick uh, on the way back to Pegasus. So this spot right here, which on the 6th of June was a German strong point here in Weistrom, is now a memorial to the commandos who helped to liberate this area. Uh, so if we go over here, here is a statue for Philippe Kiefer. Uh, he was the leader of the French commandos uh, from commando number four, who came in and liberated this area. And if we go over here, well, this is Lord Lovett. This is really nice. I, I like what they've done here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on to Pegasus now. I've now made my way down to Pegasus Bridge. We've already been here in this series, uh, but we haven't told the story about the, the link up here. So while Lord Lovett, Bill Millen, and the other commandos were making their way south down here to Pegasus Bridge, John Howard and his men were fulfilling their orders to hold until relief. Now, one thing about glider troops and paratroopers is that they're really good you know, about going in and landing behind enemy lines and taking uh, the enemy by surprise. But the weakness is that they are lightly armed, so they can't hold out forever. So the, the commandos were going to be linking up with uh, the, the glider troops and the paratroopers who had also come in right here in this spot. So here's one of the German defensive positions here at Pegasus Bridge. And as the oxen bucks were holding out, uh, there was actually, oh, it's a little bit bright there, uh, but there were a couple of German patrol boats that were making their way up from Caen uh, here on the Caen Canal. And I think Wally Parr, if I remember right, is, is the guy who uh, fired on them. And then there was also a German uh, airplane that came and dropped a bomb on Pegasus Bridge. It hit the bridge, but it was a dud. So there were a lot of efforts by the Germans to try and, and retake this bridge. And uh, the, the 21st Panzer Division was going to be closing in on them pretty soon. What we're looking at here is the Gondry Cafe. 
Uh, this was owned and operated by the Gondry family. As a matter of fact, they had been working with the French resistance and had been providing information about the German defenses here at Pegasus Bridge. Well, on the in the early morning hours of uh, June 6th, uh, this ended up serving as an aid station for John Howard and the Oxenbucks. And it was right here where some of the men from the Oxenbucks started hearing the sound of bagpipes coming from that direction right there. So right here in this general vicinity is where Lord Lovett and the commandos would have linked up with Major John Howard and the Oxenbucks. So this right here would have been the first link up between Seaborne and airborne forces on the eastern flank of the, the Normandy invasion beaches. Um, now, in the movie, uh, The Longest Day, there's a, a scene that depicts Bill Millen marching across Pegasus Bridge playing ba bagpipes. In, in reality, Lovett told him to be silent as he crossed Pegasus Bridge here, but as they were making their way down to the next bridge uh, that crosses the Orne River, codenamed Horsa, well, he told Bill Millen to strike up the bagpipes again. So right now, I'm walking along the same road that Bill Millen and Lord Lovett walked. You can hear the, the road traffic here right next to me. Pegasus Bridge is right back that way. And it was said that Lord Lovett, as he was making his way down this road, it, it was almost like a casual stroll. Uh, so there's, there's a, an example of leadership there with, with Lovett and that whenever everything is going crazy, he is the one who is remaining calm no matter what. So calm that he's making requests for uh, songs on the bagpipe. And the spot where they made their way was right here at Horsa Bridge. And that was going to complete, fully complete the link up between the seaborne and airborne forces. Look up more on this story and these people because I didn't even tell a fraction of, of their whole uh, journey and their whole story. Uh, but it really is quite amazing. So glad that we got to come here today. Okay. The only reason I'm filming this is in case my son takes a spill and falls into the English Channel. I, I want to have it as a lifelong memory. Oh, don't slip, boy. <laughs> 